kid to go to school, and so he won the award. Our student senate has done an extremely good job at their last conference. Um, they are the uh, region secretary uh, for our area and doing a wonderful job there. If you haven't heard, uh, for the first time in uh, our history for six years here at Summer Creek, our JROTC program was evaluated last week on Tuesday by Cadet Command and earned a 90 out of 100 uh, last week and became a uh, honor unit. Uh, and so we're very excited about their performance as well. They did a wonderful job in presenting and uh, uh, representing Summer Creek and getting a, an opportunity to show others what we have to offer and the wonderful students that we have here at Summer Creek. Unfortunately, uh, we've had several events. Uh, let me dismiss some of the information that you may be hearing. First of all, we've never had a week in the uh, 18 weeks that I've been here at Summit Creek where we've had uh, nine fights in one week. Here, here. That is not the case. That's not even close. That's not even close to a number. In fact, we've never had a week where we've had more than two. We have had one week where we had two. Uh, I can tell you in looking at the data, and we study it all the time, and I'm going to be having a meeting right after the holidays to give all this data. We sort of cycle like the lunar calendar. You know, when it's a full moon, you know, I, I meet with my administrative team and my staff and I let them know, look, it's going to be a full moon next week, let's be ready. Let's be ready. And I can tell you that we are. Uh, we're highly visible. We talk to our staff every Thursday. Uh, we're very visible all over the campus, in the hallways, in our areas right here, just to make sure that we have boots on the ground. The day of the events, I can tell you, we were there as well. I had an administrator right around the corner with the video that you saw on channel 13 uh, the other night. I had an administrator right there. They had already started to break up the fight when you see that video clip uh, on the news. We had an administrator there. I have all eight administrators at all three lunches. You know what the news, and I'd like to draw attention to this, is, is what the news didn't say about that video is that on any given time when we have lunch, we have 700 plus students in that cafeteria. And when you saw that event happen, you didn't see any other students getting, becoming part of that, of what was taking place. Where normally you start to see those types of things. That's the kind of work that we've been doing with our students is to make sure we're never, I'm not going to stand here in front of you after 28 years, 13 years of being a high school principal at large schools that we are going to be able to solve fighting that it never happens on the campus. That's, that's just not going to happen. I'll tell you what, if I do and find a way to do that, I won't be standing here in front of you. I'm going to write a book, and I'm going to retire. And I'm just going to wait for the dividends to start rolling in so I can live uh, very extremely well. But we have to work together, and, and that's one of the things I wanted to address with you today is, for example, as we're studying the altercations that we have here on campus, one of the very things that come out is, man, I hate social media. I don't know about you, but if you have kids, please monitor your kids. Both of the fights that we had, the two that they're talking about, started in social media. They were, they were getting on there, started very friendly, very harmless. Then, like everything else, somebody takes offense, and all of a sudden it becomes a bigger issue than what it was to start with and no one alerts us here at school. Now, we try and monitor those things. We have, we have uh, Facebook accounts, Twitter accounts, and we monitor those things to try and make sure that we're aware. But if you monitor as well, and you as a parent monitor those things, please let us know, because we will intervene. It's like anything else. We don't, when we hear a complaint, or we hear someone call us and say, you might want to look into this, we do not pass judgment on whether, eh, it's nothing, or we don't have to worry about that, that's, you know, we don't pass judgment on it, we go out and investigate it. We start the process, we bring in the people we need to talk to, 
And based on the evidence that we can find, we determine at that point whether we need to proceed, what process we need to start, who do we need to hold accountable, who do we have to talk to, so that we don't have these types of events. And that's really, I need you to help me with that. Because here's what we hear consistently when we bring in two people who have already gotten into a fight and we're dealing with them in our office. Why didn't you come to us? Well, I didn't want to be a snitch. Have you heard that term? I didn't want to be a snitch. We're not asking you to be a snitch. What we're asking you to do is help us keep a safe environment. Because you never know if that person is not bothering you or saying things about you. It might be your sibling. It might be your best friend. It might be your neighbor across the street. And you don't want them involved in anything either. So let's work with us to keep a safe healthy environment in the school by just letting us know so that we can determine how we need to take care of it. And I need your assistance with that. Because I can tell you, I can tell you that what you saw on Channel 13 is not indicative of Summer Creek High School. No, it's not. I, I am new to Summer Creek and that is not Summer Creek in the short period of time I've been here. That is not Summer Creek High School. That is not the majority or even... 2% of our population here. It is not. But that's what they show on there, and that's what we deal with to try and take care of this, and we do. Swiftly, firmly, and quickly. We will not tolerate that type of behavior. And so we deal with it very quickly. And so I need your help in doing that. I can tell you right now, our student body, I was so proud of them. When we came back after that newscast, all day long, all I heard from my student body is, Mr. Correa, why did they say those things about us? That's not who we are. We've never had nine fights in, in a week. That is not who we are. Why did they portray us that way? That is not right. That is not right. Now, do we have fights? Yes. Do we have more than I would like? Absolutely. Do we have work to do? Yes. And we will continue to do that work, but I need you to do it with me, and if you hear anything, know anything, please let us know. Now, we're going to pull all the numbers together, we're going to get all the studies we need to, and right after the new year, we'll have a group, a parent meeting, community town hall meeting here at Summer Creek, and we'll go over those and start talking about some of those things. Uh, but the biggest thing that will help us right now is getting that word out that we need to work together. You hear it, let us know. We want to know, we want to get on it right away. So again, thank you very much for being here. It's good to see you again. I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Obviously, we've got strong leadership here. Uh, and we really appreciate you. And we'll be hearing a little bit more from Mr. Craig. Let me ask you real quick. How many of you, this is your first time that you've been able to be here? Okay, raise your hand. Now, here's the hard part. How many times have you been here before? I mean, this is either or. Pretty open. Okay. Y'all pass. That's good. So, one of the things that we just want to say, and I noticed the gentleman standing in the back that hurt him first. Yeah. Trey, would you mind raising your hand? Right here? Okay. This is Trey Kramer. Now, for those of you that don't know this, without Trey Kramer, this would not we would not be here. Trey was the principal that opened this school to begin with. I was blessed to be able to be help with him, help get this started. And we've got some advisory board people. Raise your hands, please. All these people behind the scenes, this has all started with a desire to just for the community and the business leaders and the school district leaders to come together. So we are so blessed. And now, if you don't know this, we actually have, it wasn't called BizCom at the time. It was called Summer Creek, blah, 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 blah. Yes, I couldn't even pronounce it. So somebody smarter than me got it figured out and called it BizCom. So, so Trey, we appreciate you very much. I appreciate it. Guys, we are committed at the district level uh, to work hand in hand with, with Ms. Correa and our administrative team here. We have great kids in this building. Yes, we do. I will no longer stand back and watch social media try to tear this building down. We need your help. We're committed to this. Um, I'm on this campus. Uh, you know, I still, uh, even though my role as assistant superintendent, I believe I'm, I'm a bulldog at heart, um, and my heart aches when I see stuff that, that took place the other day, but I know uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt 
great things are happening here. We just have to figure out ways to make sure that the great things happen, that they get the same attention that the negative things happen. And, and Milton, I see you down there. You know, we're, we're committed. I want you guys to know this. We will stay the course, and this will be a school within our system that our parents and our community and our business folks uh, will be proud of. You just got to stand in the gap with us while we're going through some transition. So thank you all so much for being here and know that I am fully uh, in support of, of Nolan and the work he's doing here. Um, and we will get this right. Here. Yes, sir. Thank you, Trey. Give him a round. There's a proverb that says, reckless words pierce like a sword, but a tongue of the wise brings healing. And it also says, when words are many, sin is not absent. Well, social media, you know, there's a lot of words that go on there sometimes. And I've come to the conclusion, not all, all of them are good. So one of the things, that's because I'm pretty sharp. You know, but, uh, okay. So let's move on. So let me explain a couple of things. Last time that we had our meeting, we had over uh, about 150 people in this room. And so we spread it out more, and today we actually have Humble ISD had their <coughs> Education Foundation golf tournament that got rescheduled for today. So I, I really appreciate you all coming in, and it's full house today even in spite of that. Now next time, Mr. Prey is going to allow us to put the food outside, so we've got room for probably another 50 more people next time. But I just wanted to explain that. So, And so let me explain several things that you've got. You've got your agenda here. We'll be going according to this. And one of the things that I wanted to mention, and Mr. Gray is going to talk about this in a few minutes, approximately 12 o'clock, we'll be through with the agenda per se, but we're going to go right into people can stand up and say what they want to say about what they do. Taking 30 seconds. Mr. Correa, and he's going to come up and talk about this again, is he would really like you to stay. Okay, for you business people especially, listen carefully. He'd like to stay so he knows who you are so he can send business your way. Okay, is that incentive? Yes. Okay, Which is, that's a fair statement, yes, right? Sir. Okay. That's exactly right. Okay, so one of the things that I'm passing out too, you should have in front of you a, a, a little envelope that looks like this. We're going to continue this celebration next Tuesday at my office. We're having an open house. Now, inside of that, there's an invitation, but also something that's a gift for all of you. This just tears off, and it's a calendar right here for this year, and on the back it's next year. I found these to be very helpful. That's my gift to you all. We appreciate you all very much. Okay, so one of the things that we originally got started with when we started this back in 2009 in Texas, have you noticed that if you offer something to eat, people tend to come? Okay. First person who did that, Chick-fil-A over here, Wayne Johnson and his lovely bride. We appreciate you so much. Now, you can't hold it against Tony because Tony wasn't here when we got started. But Tony at HEB, he came over and got started in helping us with food as well as soon as he got here. Tony, come on up, please. And so one of the things when he came in, for people that have lived in the Summerwood area or Fall Creek area for any length of time, you know, we didn't have a grocery store for 100 years down here. And when he came, you would have thought the Rolling Stones were here. He was a lot of But I've asked Tony, he's providing lunch today, so you can thank him for that. And also, yeah, please. The first thing I'd like to say is to start with a, a thank you for on behalf of HEB and the store that we have at Summerwood. Because I can tell you, two days ago I had a visit from Scott, you may have seen on TV, playing with JJ quite a bit in the commercials. He visited the store two days ago and he said some words that I thought I'd share today. He said, this store is a poster child for HEB and the way we'd like to see them grow. Summerwood HEB has been a double digit growth store from year two, and we're finishing this year at a 20% growth over the previous year. And so the store continues to grow, double digit growth every year that we've been open, and that's because of you, the community that supports us. So we try extremely hard every day. As someone said earlier, you can't please everyone every day, uh, although we make the effort to. Uh, it's something that we continue to work on and always will. Uh, the store is growing at a fast rate. Today the store is very close to the capacity that it was built for. And so when I hear we've got five, 6,000 houses coming in the next year, year and a half. And so we're already today planning on how we accommodate, uh, whether the store expands, another store. Been riding with real estate quite a bit over the last six months trying to look at possibilities of another store close by to take some of the volume off of our store. 
What you might not know, and it's important I think for business leaders to understand, is this store pulls from a very far radius. Uh, the average driver is driving about 14 miles to our store. Mm -hmm. wow. And so when you think about the volume, it's not all coming just from the Summerwood area. We pull all the way down to I-10. Uh, we also pull all the way to Crosby. And we're pulling back across 59 down Beltway 8. And so it's quite amazing how far of a pull they have in So we do what we call spottings to determine where our customers are coming from. Today we can do those electronically. We used to do them years ago. And uh, so we're able to see where the customers are coming from. So the area is going to continue to grow. It's going to be quite the challenge for us to keep up. Today we employ 300 people. Uh, if you didn't know that, we will employ 400 by this time next year, possibly more. Uh, so that's a challenge in itself to keep our store staff. Don and I were talking previously, and he said, hey, I'll give you a few minutes to talk about it is we did a job fair uh, before the holidays, trying to get prepared for the holiday business, uh, obviously a huge lift every year around the holidays. And uh, we were trying to staff 100 people. We did a career day and a job fair, and we had 155 people walk into the store, which is a great turnout. Out of the 155 people that we walked, they walked into the store, through a two days of interviewing, we identified 55 candidates. Out of the 55 candidates, we had approximately 15 of them not pass the background check. Um, and so, and then upon hiring the rest, we had five to six in the first week change their availability who would no longer work when the business needs work. And so I share this because as the community grows, it becomes extremely difficult to staff your business. And I think we really have to challenge ourselves and stay proactively in front of that. And so we're continuing to staff. We're always trying to overstaff. That's our goal, is to prepare and make sure we're in front of it. And one of the things that I've learned in my 23 years with the company, uh, and actually 33 in the business, is that generations change, obviously, and that's a challenge for some of us. I'm called old school leadership. I'm okay with that. Uh, but the fact is, is what I've learned around, around, around a lot of our young adults is that they really want the same thing. We just got to figure out how to teach them and guide them. Because what you don't see is maybe the focus or the discipline or the direction that came in the upbringing, but the fact is they're still interested in it. And what I've learned in my leadership style is, is that I'm going to have to commit more time to developing people. And so the more conversations, the more uh, explaining the whys is extremely important, explaining why we're asking them to do the things that we're asking them to do. And believe it or not, we actually are very, very firm and have discipline in place as well. And, and our, our young adults don't have a problem with that for the most part. Yes, we have some turnover, just like we have some fights. I mean, that's just part of the business. But what I'm seeing more and more and more is with a little bit of coaching and counseling, a little bit more time spent with the individuals, the growth opportunities there. And with this area growing like it's growing, folks, we're all going to have to step back and take some time if you want your business to be successful. Because employing 300 people is challenging. To employ 400 next year is going to be more challenging. And so I thought I would just share that today. Uh, again, really appreciate what you're doing. I'd also like to mention that uh, in the back of the room, all of the products that you are experiencing for lunch today are out of my deli department. All our salads and sandwiches are made fresh every day starting at 3 a.m. every morning. And so if you're swinging by for work or what have you, you wanted to grab some, these products are ready. Exact same products that you, you ate today. These products are ready in the deli starting at 6 a.m. in the morning. And uh, we also do catering. And so it's important to realize with the holiday that your time is, is hard to come by, right? We're all busy. If you need some catering, party trays, cakes, uh, desserts, you name it. Uh, if you need them delivered in the immediate area within 10, 15 miles max, uh, we'd be glad to do that as well. So uh, there are some brochures on the back table, some business cards back there. And if there's anything we can do for you, we just really appreciate the opportunity to be here, number one, to be in this community, and we thank you. Thank you, sir. You know, sitting there thinking, you know, it's summer, Summerwood, Fall Creek folks, we're starting to eat a lot of stuff. <laughs> so Weight Watchers, you know, Weight Control, those kind of businesses might do very well here. Tonight. But uh, one of the things that I, I just wanted to say also is uh, over at Wood Creek Middle School, they have a career day, and that's going to be on the 18th. Some of you did that last year. And so they still need a few speakers. If you would like to do that, let me know. Either see me afterwards or call me or give me an email. Uh, and that's going to be on the, the morning of the 18th. And that's a very good thing. And then one of the things that I did, and I didn't intend to, but you know, I didn't have my glasses on. So today we've got two sponsors that are here with us. The first one, and Vivian, you might come up real quick. I think they're going to have Vivian speak every time because they finally figured out she's better looking than all those other guys. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that we've got two sponsors here that are just absolutely wonderful. Memorial Herman is such a great partner. 
I mean, they're involved with everything. You see them out here, they're at the football games, and really are just a central part of our community. We appreciate you so much. Come on up, Dave. Give them a right. involved in the community is the support that you all have provided to, to us. Um, as you know, we have our community care center located just in front of Summer Creek High School, and we're really excited to announce that we have just, that facility's been open two years, almost. In those two years, we started out with one primary care provider. We have just added our sixth primary care provider um, because of business and support that you guys have provided to that facility and we're working on number seven. Um, Don mentioned one of the things that we uh, also do is provide support to the sports teams and football games. I'd like to ask two people to stand up and wave. We've added two new orthopedic surgeons to our team this year. Um, you may have met Dr. George. Uh, we also have Dr. Michael Cusick, and these guys stand on our, our football field sidelines Thursday, Friday, Saturday night games, at, at varsity games. They're doing our training room rounds for your high school students here at Summer Creek. They're here every Wednesday during football season. They open up their clinics for Saturday, uh, Saturday morning injury clinics. So a big thank you for supporting these guys and to them for supporting um, Summer Creek and, and our students here in the area. Thank you. Okay, one of our other great sponsors uh, that we have is our YMCA. And let me kind of give you a look. Come on up. No, no, I want you to do your exercises right here. Okay. So uh, she can push that too. She can do that. So one of the things that a lot of you may or may not know is that eventually, and we, we were planning on doing this back, yeah, I know it's right in your eyes. And so, uh, well, I have to talk to Sam about that too. But one, one of the things that we had done back uh, in 2007, I believe it was, if you look at Wood Creek Middle School, that originally was going to have a YMCA as a part of it, but that's when the economy went. And so at some point, that's going to still on the books. But one of the things that they've done a great job, they're a wonderful partner for us down here. Alicia. Thank you. Give her a round of applause, please. Thank you. And Don mentioned we um, actually own property adjacent to Wood Creek Middle School and so someday there will be a YMCA um, on that property and um, it's just a matter of time and growing our programs in this area. We do currently offer programs in this Summerwood, Summer Creek, Fall Creek area um, at that site specifically and um, mainly youth sports but we also offer after school programs in all of the Humble ISD elementary schools. And so um, we're serving kids in this area and have been for years. So we're hoping to continue to grow so that we can have a, a YMCA someday. Real quick, one thing I want to talk about is uh, I think many people know that the YMCA is a nonprofit organization, but I think there are also some people that don't know that and understand that. The YMCA of, at Lake Houston, which serves this area and all the way up to East Montgomery County up in Splendora, raises over $300,000. Um, every year that comes back to the kids and the, pe uh, the people in our community. And um, one of the events we have coming up is Bridge Fest, February 7th. And so money from Bridge Fest that we raise from registrations for our 5K run, um, it will go directly back to the kids and the people in this community as well as Kingwood um, community and the EMC, um, East Montgomery County up in Splendora community. We still have sponsorships available. If your company would like to sponsor um, the Bridge Fest, you can grab my business card uh, after at the end of the, the day today, and I can give you more information on that. Um, but also, if you have volunteers that would like to participate, if your company would like to come out and volunteer the day of the race, we would appreciate that as well. So that's all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, one of the things that I wanted to mention, too, because we talked about Craig Kramer, but one person that is so vital to the success of this organization, who's not here, I think he's out playing golf, I know it's hard, you know, but Dr. Sconzo, Dr. Sconzo from day one has been so supportive, uh, and I, literally, I don't know of any other school districts that would be like this, we're so blessed, so. Okay, so the next thing that we wanted to talk about before uh, we, uh, we move on, we do have a couple, and if you can just give me just a second, Sergeant, um, 
We have, and is Mr. Craig, where are you right now? I'm right here. Okay. Uh, I wanted to just mention to you, we've got a lady and actually two people here from the uh, project graduation, and I wanted to introduce them. Is there anything you wanted to say about that before I introduce them? No, I'll clean up after they... they uh, <laughs> okay, okay. But I, I think it goes without saying it's a vital, vital program. Oh, you want me to... Uh, oh, yes. In, in terms of the presentation when they do this, please... Uh, lend the, your full attention to them. Obviously, as you know, Project Graduation is an opportunity for us to offer programs to make sure that once our graduates have gone through and celebrated the, uh, the act of graduating and receiving their diploma and celebrating with their families, as you know, they tend to go off and have a good time. We want to make sure that they have a good, safe time. So we offer what is called Project Graduation. We keep them together, we offer programs for them, we have a lot of fun with them, safe fun, prizes, things like that to bring them here rather than go off and do something that uh, uh, may not be safe for them. So please, listen to their presentation, support us as much as you possibly can to offer some safe alternatives for our graduates on that day that they graduate. Thank you. Thank you. It's great having him here. I, I really like that. You, you know, I'll ask you other stuff too. Okay, so one of the things, Tammy, where are you? Okay, uh, and then this is just going to be a minute this time now. What? And you all can just stay right there because we don't have a lot of time in the. Okay, it's just a minute. Okay, so, okay. All right. So next time you're going to be able to make more, but we just found out. So can you just mention real quick a few things? I'm also a parent of a senior here. Uh, Project Graduation is a chaperone night for our senior students after they have graduation. A safe place where they can come and celebrate their last night of the creek. Our goal this year is to raise fifty thousand dollars and pays for prizes and food and all kinds of safe things here for the school. We have some sponsor letters here for you guys to share. Um, we need your support. There's de different levels that you can participate in. This is also a nonprofit tax free. Um, um, organization that we have, so it's tax exempt. So we're going to just put these on your tables, and if you would like to donate, there's a place, and it's also PayPal if you donate for our cause. Okay. We appreciate you all very much, and one of the things I know that um, Mr. Peterson over there worked on that last year, and one of the things we're going to, you know, one of the things that we have to be careful with this organization, we don't want this to be something where every time you come, you feel like there's hand, somebody wanting money from you. But we do want to support as much as we can programs like this. So one of the things is, Barbara, where are you? I'm Barbara Probant and Gerard, we appreciate it. She does the notes for us every time and does such a great job. If you can include something on that, contact information this time, and then they'll come back in February and give us an update on how they're doing. So along that same line of safety, we've got two people here, and Sheriff Garcia has been so good to us out in this area. We've had some other programs that we've done with the Sheriff's Department. We have two gentlemen here that I'm going to ask you to give them a huge round of applause because we appreciate you so much. Come on up, gentlemen. Sergeant Chris and Sergeant Phillips. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I want to say thank you all, Mr. Gaddy, for the invitation to be here this morning. Uh, we're very excited about a new program for the Sheriff's Office. Uh, Mr. Correa, where are you ready? Um, you mentioned social media. I'm not sure. Is Summer Creek a part of iWatch already? No. All right. Well, that's something you need to look into. Okay. Uh, there are several ISDs already on iWatch Harris County. Uh, the sheriff has a mobile application talking about social, social media. And it creates a way to not be a snitch to help the community. Uh -huh. And it does it through your cell phone application. All the children have cell phones. I can see something, say something, take a picture, send a text message. It all will go through. It will all go through our app. You can go to your ISD police. We won't even have to field it ourselves, but more information on that at another time if you need it. But that's a great tool for you. Sounds good. Sir. All right. Uh, I think your name is Sam. Sam gave me orders already. The police officer wasn't really good, but I took his orders. <laughs> the flag, and I'll read my PowerPoint. <laughs> Sam. Sam's that way. He's that way. He's that way. Uh, but in short, on your tables you have a packet. And in that packet, we left a business card and several documents. Uh, I'll be brief about the program. But what this program does, um, it's a new inventive way, I would say, 
Uh, anyone ever heard of video verification before? Maybe a few people? Well, if you have an ADT system in your home and you have those cameras, they can basically look into your home through that surveillance camera system and tell you if someone's at your residence. So that's the same type of technology we're going to use for the sheriff's office now. Uh, it's a great way to do it. Some people have the mindset that it's going to be this big brother thing. You want to see what's going on. But this is only going to be for your business in this, in this uh, in the area. Does anyone have a business? Any business owners? Anyone want a safe business? <laughs> so this is all about safety at your business. It's only going to be to business at this time. Um, and it's going to be a free of charge. So we don't want any money from anyone. All right. Sheriff is using the resources from the sheriff's office, seized funds, and other means. But we're not going to charge the citizens of Perry County anything for this program at all. So we're using resources you've already paid for. If you have to raise surveillance systems on your property, excuse me, I talk kind of fast sometimes. So if you have surveillance cameras on your property already at this time, you're not going to have to spend any more additional money. It's going to use whatever you have in place already. So if, does anyone have IP-based or URL-based cameras? Can you see your cameras on your cell phone, on the tablet, the computer? If you're accessing them that way, we're going to use the exact same technology to access your cameras from the Sheriff's Office. What the, the key to this thing is, it's going to go directly to our 911 center. So only our 911 center, which will be our certified officers, will see what's going on at your place of business. So if there's someone robbing your location, breaking into your location, there's a suspicious person, activity, anything of that nature at all, we can see what's going on in real time, assess it, and send the, the correct response. Not just one unit, not just two, but we need to send multiple or our SWAT team so we'll know how to address those needs. But let me use some details on the slideshow. Next slide, please. Oh, I got conducted this. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> this program is a public-private partnership to help protect our community. It enlists the help of the community and business in the fight against crime. Like that third point, it is free of charge. The program is available only to businesses in the jurisdiction of the Harris County Sheriff's Office. So I know part of Summer Creek is now part of uh, Precinct 4, I believe. Uh, if you're part of that the actual comfortable precinct now, we just got uh, clearance on earlier this week that we can't actually take your business on the program as well. So even if you're part of Precinct 4, Precinct 5, Precinct 3, as long as it's not the city of Houston, we can actually still put you on our program. The reason that's going to be the case is we have what's called a PSAP. It's a public safety answering point. That call for 911 goes to the PSAP in your area. So if you call 911 from the city, it's going to go to the city center and not ours. We couldn't tap into your cameras. We wouldn't know to do so. So if you're actually in the county and it goes through our PSAP, we'll be able to access your cameras or get your call for service, rather, and then access those cameras. But I'll give you some more details. Don't get worried just yet, okay? Um, it provides real-time intelligence to responding, law enforcement assessing the surveillance systems and cameras of participating businesses should they have a need for law enforcement services. So what that says to you, we're not going to monitor your business 24-7. That's not what we're offering at this time. It's going to be only in the event you have a need for law enforcement services. We're only going to look when we have a need to look. We'll disengage as soon as we need to disengage. So it's only going to be for the safety of the, of the situation that's going on at that time. I know I talk fast. I apologize. It's okay. okay. You're doing good. Um, <laughs> business, business video management system access information is kept safe and secure. What the Sheriff's Office did is create a secure line, one dedicated line. It's not on the contact server with any of our other information. It's a total secure line for this information. So it's not going to be hackable. Once I'm going to get into it, we've kept everyone's social security numbers, birth dates, and all that thing kind of thing safe for years. This is even more safe than that. It took another step and another measure to keep this safe, okay? Um, next point there says businesses choose the cameras they want us to see or have access to. So in the program, if you have 10 cameras and you only want to have the front door, maybe the back door, you choose how you want to participate. So if you have a, a private room or someone you, somewhere intimate in your home, in your business, so I say, um, we won't have that access. We'll set it up the way you want it to be accessed. So adjust your business and you choose the angles or the cameras you want to see, okay? Um, the, the Harris County Sheriff's Office will only access your cameras if there is a law enforcement need. So again, I stress that. This is not a 24-7 big brother situation. It's only in the event you call 911, you call 221-6000 on an emergency line. We'll look when we have a need to look only. That's the only time we're going to look. Um, what's great about this as well is that we're not going to record. So if your system is recording, you have your own DVR system, you remain the custodian of your records at all times. So we're not going to get that camera or ask for that. By the same means we would if we had an investigation, we'll submit a subpoena for those records and get it at that time. So you remain the custodian of your records at all times. We're only going to get live information. That's it. Okay. Sound good so far? Yes, sir. All right. Real quick here. The system requirements. An internet accessible URL or IP surveillance system or camera. So if you have this type of system in place already, you're a prime candidate for the program. 
it's going to be a great thing to have for your customers and for your students. We have a couple of school districts that are getting ready to come on board as well. In the event they had an active shooter situation, things of that nature, our SWAT teams, our ERT teams, response teams would know how to get into the school, where the shooting's taking place, things of that nature. So IFDs are getting on board, McDonald's is on board, Sprint's on board. Uh, all types of businesses right now are actually getting on board with this program. Um, the beautiful part I like about it as well, you're going to create us a username and password for the program. So what, what that means is that you'll know when we go in, if you know how to access your, your, uh, your logs there, you'll know when we go in and when we go out. So there's no, if we're going to keep our hands honest and open, you'll see when we go in and when we go out. Every time that we access these cameras, we're going to generate a report of why we went into the account. You can always ask for that report and it will always be submitted to you for one day report. Okay? Um, system must be viewable with current and future versions of Microsoft Internet Explorer. We had to keep it friendly, user friendly. There are some uh, different types of software, things of that nature. But if it's not accessible through an Internet Explorer based type of application, we can't view it. So if you're using a peer to peer, you know what that is, things like that, we can't access it right now. Okay, so only an Internet Explorer based type system. All right, recommended system uh, specifications system with entry, exit door, and exterior camera views, parking lot views. A lot of times, criminals know they have a limited amount of time to do what they have to do and get out. What we want to do, we're actually right now being able to. Once a call comes in, within two minutes, we're actually on, we have live eyes on what's going on. So our response time is normally three to five minutes. So before the officer even arrives, we can see what's going on. And maybe the, the car may be in the parking lot, the person may just be leaving, we get a plate, we get a recognition of anything we can get before that officer gets there is going to be great for our situation. So that's why this is going to be a very key thing to have. Uh, system capable of streaming multiple video, videos at the same time. So if you have several cameras going at one time, we can see all angles of your business. That's going to be great. System capable of streaming audio, even better. We get some recognition that way. And then a system capable of allowing HCS to access the rewind. So some have a playback feature as well. So any of those things in your systems, we can use it from your, from our end if you give us access to it. Okay. And this is actually a great plus for businesses. Um, we're going to give free up to six. If you need more than that, tell us where you need them. But these are placards. We have them made up, uh, and they look just like this. They have them 8 by 10 and 5 by 7 So when you see these placards on businesses here coming pretty soon, hopefully, uh, you'll know that it's going to be a secure location. So if something goes on, takes place, this is a place that the sheriff's office has eyes, but we need to have eyes on the location. So if you're outside the parking lot, see something going on, call 911. We can see what's going on by your call, not just the store's call. Okay, so anyone that calls in and gives this address of that location within a 200-yard radius of this location will be able to access those cameras. Okay? So those are at no cost to you as well. So that's going to be a free placard for participating in the program. So be used to seeing those around. This is on your table. It's that brochure, the little skinny one. It has all the details that I just told you about. So you're familiar with that, the smaller one you have on your table. So I want to read it all to you. This is the outside. The number that you see is our crime prevention unit. I'll leave some information here as well about crime prevention. There's a lot of things that I want you guys to know about in the community that are free to you. A lot of things are just not used, but they don't know they're out there. So I'll leave those things to you, like home security inspections. Anybody had home security inspections before? Not yet. You can save 5% on your home insurance. Did you know that? There you go. So things like that, knowledge is power. So we do those free of charge. We submit those to you. We give you a report. Send it to your insurance company. Next year when you redo, you get a discount. All right. So things like that are good to know about. But that's going to be the number there for our crime prevention unit. And that's also community services. So anything you want from the sheriff's office, free classes, they're going to be at that number. All right? And then this is my contact information. It should be a card there. You may have uh, Deputy Sanchez's card on your, on your table there. Anything about this program or the sheriff's office we can do for you, we would love to be a service to you. We are public servants. And we love what we do, and we love keeping the community safe. Uh, our wife says, see something, say something. Our program says our cameras are always on duty. So we want to always be there to serve you guys, be there to protect you guys and do what we can. So take advantage of this program. If anyone can use it, or benefit from it, share the information. We'll get out to them as soon as possible. Please give us a call as soon as you can about this program or anything else regarding the Sheriff's Office. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. One of the things that I wanted to mention before we move on to the next speaker is how much I appreciate people bringing ideas to me. Um, let me see, was that Kyle? That, Kyle Geary, was that you that gave this idea? Okay, well, you may have forgotten. Somebody told me about this that I was with. And so it's very nice to have those kind of things. And so one of the things before we go to the next speaker, I did want to say, so I was teasing Sam up here. Sam's an awesome guy. Now, one of the things, though, about Sam, when he sends you an email, it's very wordy. 
I tried to use the least number of characters to respond back to him. We have a contest. He says, got it. You know, so anyway, Sam, we appreciate you very much. Also, Colleen, would you raise your hand? Colleen Merritt. She's with the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for all that you do. that uh, if Trey is still here, somewhere along the line, uh, Trey had the idea that we ought to put ourselves under the umbrella of the chamber. Great idea. Great idea. And so one of the things that the chamber has done such a great job for us uh, is they have included us, they've embraced us, they've tried to do everything they can to help us. One of the things that they did early on, I became on the board, uh, Chamber of Commerce board, and I've been on there for four years now. And so I'm going off, but now Dwayne Johnson, if you raise your hand, he's on the Chamber of Commerce board. And also the printing <laughs> princess, Renee Howard, is on that board. Also Noah LeBeau from down here is now on that board. And the next speaker is on that board. Now let me explain something about this. <clears throat> This area down here was the third fastest growing area in the state of Texas and in the country, I believe, before Generation Park. Now, if you've been sleeping under a rock, Generation Park is coming. And I've told you for a long time that, well, Ryan McCord came, Rick McCord came out. You see that they're real people. But one of the things that Ryan McCord said to me, one of the very first things he said to me is, what can we do to help you? Now, sometimes people can say that, and it means absolutely nothing. But McCord Development has proven over and over, and I'm sure will for years to come, that they're coming in to be a great neighbor. In fact, one of the things that John Thornoy has agreed to be on the Chamber of Commerce board, that's not a fly-by-night kind of thing. So, John, we just want you to know we truly do appreciate you all coming in. We're looking forward to our, our partnership together for years to come, and we're looking forward to what you have to say. Give them a round of applause, please. Well, I didn't, I didn't get any instructions on where to stand, but I'm guessing I need to stand by the uh, American flag over here. Uh, <laughs> I'm John Flournoy with Generation Park, and we're a small team, and, and I work with Ryan McCord uh, on bringing in large Fortune 500 companies and large uh, private companies uh, into Generation Park. So that's one of my main responsibilities. So I was driving in from downtown uh, to come to this meeting, and I've been a little under the weather. I've got, yeah, I've got this crud that's been going around. It's been awful. I've been in two weeks, and I thought, oh. You know what? I, I bet I can go to the Memorial Hermann Convenient Care Facility and, uh, after this meeting and, and get a doctor to look at me and get to feeling better before the holidays. So I called him up and I said, "Hey, uh, do y'all do y'all work like an urgent care? I can just kind of walk in and y'all can see me." Like, well, yeah, we, we, we're we're doing so well right now that we can't we can't see you right now. We we can't do any walk-ins and. I was disappointed, but all the same, I thought that this is a good indicator of what's going on in our community, and uh, I'm just real excited to hear that. But what I wanted to do today was give you all a little update on what's going on at Generation Park. It's really exciting, and I'm sure a lot of you all have driven down the Beltway and on Westlake Houston Parkway, uh, coming in and out, uh, and you see a lot of the construction going on, and are probably wondering what that is and, and uh, when it's going to be completed. Uh, I got to ask a question here. There was a, a road real estate, residential real estate broker who has been flying a drone over Generation Park. And, uh, and, and is, is that person here? <laughs> no, I'm being serious. We're about to show your video. <laughs> so, uh, so they sent us this video and said, hey, I thought, you, I thought you'd like to see this video. And it's really cool. And, uh, and we, we took some creative liberties and overlaid uh, all the activity that's going on within the development so it'll give you guys a better understanding uh, and a little bird's eye view. So with that, I guess we'll get Sam to, to kick it off. So there, there was some audio, but it's, it's yeah, just a, let's see. Well, I think it's not playing. 
see if I can do anything to speed it up a little bit. Keep talking. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep talking. But uh, we'll see how this goes. But Westlake Houston Parkway, which uh, which is currently, you know, it stops at, at our entrance in, uh, here to, to uh, Summer Creek High School, is, is now going to be punched through to uh, Lockwood Road, and that's going to be... There we go. That, it's, it's, just, it's just some music, so well. So that's the West Lake. That'll be completed uh, landscape with the walking trails. Uh, it's going to be early 2016, and y'all have seen that being constructed if you've driven down Lockwood. West Lake Houston Parkway, that's going to be completed probably about May, where y'all can utilize it to go cut through to Lockwood. That's FMC's 173-acre campus. <coughs> uh, this is a large uh, industrial deal that we're working on currently. And then Lockwood Road, it's a public-private partnership with El Franco uh, Lee, and it's going to be completed uh, at the end of 2015 as a four-lane divided thoroughfare. Um, this is, this is FMC's first phase on 70 acres. There's over a million square feet. Uh, one of the neat things about FMC's project is they're doing all structured parking, which is unusual for a suburban area. It's giving it an urban feel, and we're real excited about that. We're going to kind of continue that trend in Generation Park. So we've talked a lot about the ESPA, the 52-acre mixed-use uh, uh, development at Generation Park, which actually does have a long time horizon, uh, seven to 10 years. We're uh, extremely focused on the northern portion um, of the ESPA, and when you, you look at where we have these call-outs, these blue dots that are gonna pop up in a second, uh, it'll show a multifamily uh, hotel, which will be a courtyard and a residence inn. So if you've got folks coming in from out of town, relatives, they'll finally have a place to stay pretty nearby. So I came up with this catchphrase at the end of this, from vision to reality. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, uh, it's been a long, a long time in the making, Generation Park. Um, and when we, Ryan and I were talking about the first time that there was tower cranes out on Beltway in our, our, in our quadrant of town, and uh, Ryan, because he's, he's I mean, it's, it's a lot more blood, sweat, and tears from him. I've been on for about two and a half years. He said he cried a little bit when he saw those tower cranes going up. It's a pretty big deal. And there are a lot of people, we, we did a, a, a ton of presentations, and just thought, man, these guys are dreamers. You know, they're, they're just, they've just got this grand vision. It's going to be impossible to pull this off. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty incredible driving down here and having it be a reality uh, every day. And, I don't know if y'all, I'm going to get to that here because I know we're short on time, but uh, that tilt wall building is part of the industrial component of FMC's 70 uh, acre subsea services division. I mean, that has gone up in like three weeks. I don't know if any of y'all have been watching that. It's, it's unbelievable the amount of construction going on, but excited to be here today. Thanks for having me, and thanks, Don. Thank you. And I wanted to give you an update on one thing. FMC Technologies was planning on speaking at our next one in February. I talked with them earlier this week. They're actually having a board meeting that's in February after that meeting. So it'll be the June meeting that they're going to be coming to. But we'll be giving you updates on that. So is Mr. Peters here yet? Okay, he was having some issues at his school that he may not be able to be here. So one of the things that, you know, this land right let me make sure I'm in the right spot here. Yeah, I think the way it's right there. So if you notice by CBS or Moral Harmony, that land out there that everybody's going, oh yeah, we got this coming, we got this coming, and then you see all these different names of different uh, 
groups that they come and go. Well, we're excited because we got a keeper this time. Uh, the Dulles Properties. And, my, and I'm probably not saying that right, but we're going to learn about it. Mary Jean MacArthur is here, and we're excited to have you come and speak. Give her a round of applause. Hi, I'm Mary Jean MacArthur, and I'm with Fidelis Realty Partners. Um, we are a commercial developer, and we specialize in mainly retail power centers. Um, we do do some small offices, and we also do some medical type development, but mainly we do power centers. I'm interested to finally meet John. We've talked on the phone a hundred times, but never actually seen each other. And I wanted to thank Tony again for bringing lunch. It was really delicious. It's so nice to have a choice of a salad when you come to one of these. Thank you. That was very nice. We do a lot of business with HEB, and I'm glad to finally meet you. <laughs> um, Fidelis purchased the property that's there behind the CBS and Memorial Herman. I guess it's been about a year ago, and we've been working on, I think we're on site plan number 42 or something like that. Um, just so you know, when we, when we do this, it depends on what businesses are interested in coming, and we change the site plan constantly to accommodate the needs of the community. Um, <coughs> you want to, okay, thank you. Um, the first thing I wanted to tell you is um, we do have a commitment from Kroger. There will be a Kroger anchoring the center. Um, we are also negotiating what's called a letter of intent with five different retail anchors. Um, these are anywhere from small to medium-sized retail anchors. I can't tell you who they are yet because we haven't signed the letters, but um, it is the types of businesses that you need in the community. We are also negotiating with a large theater. We'll be on site. Um, a fitness center and we have currently 27 and as of about 20 minutes ago um, our leasing manager just told me it's now 32 uh, different LOIs coming in from restaurants dentists doctors salons and other small businesses and let LOI is letter of intent. letter of intent that means these these tenants these merchants are intending to come here and have asked us for space in our center if you'll go to the next uh, this is kind of the basic site plan, um, just so you can kind of get your bearings. You can kind of see where the CBS and the Memorial Harmon is there on the corner. And the Kroger will be anchored um, kind of directly behind that CBS. And then all of the um, areas that are outlined in gray are where the letter of intent, the people that have actually already signed, they were just working out details of the lease. Um, the other areas are still available uh, that are kind of a greenish yellow. <laughs> um, and those areas are where the other restaurants, <coughs> doctors, dentists, um, any number of businesses can come in. We're very, very excited. We went to um, Las Vegas for what's called the ICSC convention in May. This was by far the hottest property on our table. <coughs> Um, we had vendors from all over the country coming in wanting to put their businesses here. Um, again, in Dallas in November, we went to the, the local Texas convention. Same thing. This area was definitely the number one spot. Everybody wants to come here. They know about Generation Park. They know about the growth. They know about how close in proximity it is to the ship channel and, and all the businesses that are increasing because of that port. So it, it's really exciting for us to come into your community and we're hoping that, you know, as you see people that are starting up new businesses, new types of businesses that are coming in, tell them about us. Let them know that we are developing this site and we have still have some space available, but to be honest with you, it's going so quickly, get them to call quickly. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions? Thank you very much for having me out. Okay. You know, isn't that, a, that is cool. That is way cool. And so uh, one of the things that she mentioned is about the fact that she got to meet John and she got to meet Tony. One of the things that I think has been one of the byproducts of this meeting is getting to see people face to face. I mean, usually you have to go through phone calls or 
gatekeepers or something of that nature. Isn't it nice to be able to see people face to face, see if you really feel like you can trust them, feel like they're good people to work with? I think it's really blessed with that. And one of the things that I will tell you that has been a blessing to me is how you have cared for me and my family. Uh, my wife, unfortunately, couldn't be here today, and we, I appreciate your prayers for her. She's going to have another uh, doctor's appointment on the 18th, but we're hoping to find out some things about there. So if you wouldn't mind keeping her in your prayers, I'd really appreciate it, because she does appreciate you very, very much. So one of the things that I wanted to mention before we bring Michael up is that in a few minutes at noon, if you need to go, go ahead and go, but just realize Mr. Correa really wants to hear about who you are for that last part. But I'll let him say a word or two at that point. But uh, one of the things I wanted to uh, Michael Kratz, be coming on up if you don't mind. Michael, I really appreciate too because he actually met Miss MacArthur and uh, I had not had that opportunity. So we're glad for that. Michael's going to give us some great news. So give him a round of applause too. Please. Thank you. as I can just run through, uh, give you an update kind of on the residential and population growth that we're uh, experiencing here in the Lake Houston area. This here, uh, you can see on this slide, the uh, kind of historical uh, growth that the whole six zip code Lake Houston area has uh, undergone uh, throughout its history. This is a number, I don't know if you guys like taking notes or have a pen, but write that number down and uh, keep that in mind as we keep going through. Uh, the slide. So this is kind of breaks down that same current 2014 population in the whole Lake Houston area by uh, by community, by zip code, and I've got them in kind of descending order from largest to smallest. And uh, again, everybody kind of knows that we have a high uh, percentage of owner-occupied uh, housing units, so that's always good to have a high rate of home ownership in uh, your area. And just to give everyone a, a graphical kind of view a point of view from that previous slide these are <clears throat> again each uh, community or each part of the Lake Houston area and their uh, population and household uh, numbers uh, for 2014 <clears throat> so that number uh, that I said to write down is going to be affected by this so this is all the upcoming uh, residential growth that we know is coming and, uh, this is available in our Business Matters uh, magazine, which you can pick up uh, when you leave off the table out there. It's also accessible online through the uh, Chamber and the EDP uh, website. So uh, again, that number uh, for 2019, which we're projected to have for population, uh, is close to 260,000. Um, which would give us a growth rate between now and 2019 of 7.5%. However, uh, when you take into account all of the residential growth, if we kind of extrapolate that out and say, let's just pretend that all those units get built and occupied by 2019, that actually puts the population growth rate for that period of time at 21.5%. At um, so that actually creates about... Uh, depending on the average household size, which uh, this would be 2.6 would be the average household size for this number. And I use uh, 3.0, which is the average household size for the whole Lake Houston area. So you, we're looking at about 33,000 uh, to about 38,000 new residents by 2019. Uh, like I said, that's if, you know, all those units that are currently planned, which are indicated on uh, this map, Get, get built and occupied by 2019. This is kind of the, the new population growth that we're looking at. So uh, we're really on a household and population growth rate of about you know 20 percent in the next five years, which is was pretty uh, amazing. Uh, generation part we don't really need to cover because John's here and he kind of hit that. Um, and I don't know if anyone else has known, if you follow the, the EDP Facebook or our Twitter feed, I've posted this. Uh, this is actually going to be coming in here on uh, Lockwood, I believe, and uh, at N uh, North Lake Houston Parkway. And uh, it'll bring about 500 construction jobs, about 25 to 30 uh, permanent jobs, and it'll be a natural gas uh, power plant uh, just right here around the corner. Um, so there's just some more stats. <clears throat> about that. It's a 200 acre site. It's been kind of in negotiation since 2007, so it's kind of just now uh, coming into fru uh, fruition. 
Um, and just kind of an overall view of the of the end of the year numbers of what we've done uh, at the Lake Houston Area Economic Development Partnership. Um, as I said, about 13,000 uh, residential units are planned for construction or under construction as we speak. Um, Four million square feet of Class A office space are planned for construction. That includes everything that John um, mentioned as well. Uh, over 60 new businesses opened just this year in the Lake Houston area. Um, about 2 million square feet of new industrial space that's mostly uh, oil and gas, energy and uh, distribution and logistics related uh, was built in the Lake Houston area in 2014. Uh, through our BRE program we retained uh, and serviced about over just about three uh, over 3,000 primary jobs and that was only at 25 companies that we were able to hit just due to our capacity of only having one employee for the <laughs> uh, and, and some help from Ted Mandel. He, he actually uh, did a lot of those visits, so uh, he's not here right now, but he actually did uh, do a good bit of that. And so here's our website. Uh, please, I encourage everyone to go out and check that out. Um, and if you call me and ask me a question and it can be answered on this uh, website, I'm just going to hang up just to let you know. So <laughs> Just joking. Uh, all right. So uh, I'm always available via uh, email or phone. Or, uh, so always get in touch with me uh, whenever you have any questions or want to talk or chat about uh, growth in the area. Thanks. Okay. themselves. Sam, come on up. Sam is a very amazing person. and He's going to tell you about how amazing he is. Uh, thanks so much. As you know, we finished up our total resource campaign with the Lake Houston Area Chamber of Commerce. Wrapped that up at the end of November. And with all your help, we had a goal of $307,000 to raise for all the programs and memberships. We flowed out of the water with over $361,000. So round of applause for everybody. $0.50. Cents. Somehow we ended up with fifty cents. True story. We don't care. We'll take every bit of it. But it's a great job, everybody, and all the uh, volunteers that help make it make it happen. Uh, it's a great community to live in, and we're really reaping the benefits of everything that we see. True story. Uh, and, and the board members can back me up on this. We live in one of the most uh, amazing quadrants of the city. If you take I forty five and take the east quadrant all the way to east I ten, outside of six ten, we're the most generous. Uh, giving group of people in Houston. Outside of 610, there's a lot of rich snobs that I don't know. <laughs> Inside of 610, but outside of that, and folks, that's more than sugar land and the woodlands. We live, this is information from the uh, Rice University Center for uh, Nonprofit Studies. So we live in an awesome, awesome part of town. And the chamber is able to connect all these dots for everybody. So keeping up the good work is great. Thanks all I have. Thank you. Again, thank you, Don, and, and one more time, uh, again, I appreciate you for being here this afternoon. I know last time we tried to do this, and I don't want to keep you all afternoon, but I would like an opportunity to get to know who you are, uh, to listen, uh, your name, uh, your business, and what you do so that I